I got one of those times this morning that most preachers, uh, I, don't, I won't say they don't like it, but uh, I may have to run both of them together. The Lord sort of changed my mind on, on the Texas. Uh, I wrote, I don't very seldom ever do this, I wrote some definitions down that, uh, in order to get the right definition of something, which I very seldom ever, ever do that. Uh, I can't concentrate two places at the same time. But I'd like to read this morning, uh, and then maybe throw two texts together. I don't know. But from the third chapter of the book of uh, First Timothy, third chapter, and, <clears throat> and then verse 16, it says, Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, for God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the night's rest you gave us, for waking us up, and for a beautiful day that you provided for us. We thank you, God, most of all, for salvation. Thank you, God, for your spirit that dwells within us, that we can have this comfort. Now we pray, God, as we get ready to declare this message, however it turns out, God, you know at this time, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I might have a double text. I don't know. The first, on what was on my mind, first of all, was it says, without controversy, which means with, with certainty and no dispute. In other words, there's no dispute about it, no doubt about it. Without controversy. Great, it said, was the mystery of godliness. Now, I looked up the word mystery, and in here, and it's, mystery usually is something that's hard to understand. But that's not the case here. It's talking about the, the doctrine of respecting an incarnated Christ uh, or the incarnated work of the Messiah, which had been hidden long before the world was even created. The true plan of salvation, in other words. Back before this world was ever created, back, I don't know how many years man would count it. The Bible tells me in 1 John 5 and 7, Frank had said there was three that bear record in heaven. And that was the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Ghost. And John said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You see, God could not die. So in order to redeem mankind, He, uh, well that's another story within itself, uh, He had Christ but uh, to come so that Christ could die. But it said, without controversy, great is the mystery of Godness. For God was manifested in the flesh. And there's where Christ comes at. He had uh, the Holy Spirit to conceive a virgin. She had a man-child by the name of Jesus. And that was truly man and truly God. And that's why He was called a, an incarnated Christ. And that said He was manifested in the flesh. He was justified by the Spirit. If you'll recall, when Jesus was born there uh, in Bethlehem and the shepherds was out watching the sheep over the night, the, the angels came and, and the Spirit told them about the Lord that was born. And uh, when Jesus was baptized by John, uh, uh, the heavens opened up and God said through the Spirit, uh, This is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. And so he was justified by the Spirit. He was seen of angels. And of course, the shepherd part took care of that. 
uh, preached unto the Gentiles. And we know that Peter had preached to, uh, to Cornelius, who was a Gentile. Uh, the Apostle Paul uh, preached to the Gentiles and said he was believed on by the world. You and I are evidence of that, uh, that uh, uh, God, uh, the Word was preached unto the world, and he said, received up into glory. And in course in Acts 1, 9 through 11, <coughs> when, they was, uh, when Jesus ascended and the clouds took him away, uh, an angel came and said <coughs> that he would come back in like manner. Uh, but the other thought that came to me while I was sitting there uh, was found over in the book of James, uh, uh, brother, where it says, These things ought not to be. And that's what I'd like to use for a text this morning. I have no idea where I'll go with it uh, because God knows. And uh, so this morning, the first thing that came to my mind uh, uh, this morning was uh, uh, without controversy or without dispute, uh, I want you to know contrary uh, to what science may teach you today, uh, uh, it was God that created and formed this earth. Uh, it was God that made man and created uh, uh, male and female. Uh, male and female created he them. Uh, <coughs> nowhere did I ever read uh, uh, that he had created uh, a man to want to be a woman uh, or a woman to be a man. Uh, uh, he did not create transgenders. Uh, uh, brother that's the work of the devil uh, and the Bible says these things ought not to be. Uh, and so I want you to know there's things uh, uh, that need not to be. Uh, oh, preachers do their best. Uh, uh, the church does their best uh, uh, to try to win men and women uh, uh, that's lost to Christ. Uh, uh, but in spite of all that, uh, uh, you'll see sometimes uh, uh, a church member uh, uh, go do something contrary uh, uh, to the the will of God uh, and the Bible said these things uh, uh, need not to be uh, I just uh, uh, got word the other day uh, of a member of the free will Baptist uh, and I tell you I don't know sometimes I think uh, uh, all the computers in the world uh, ought to just blow up uh, I know they've got their advantages uh, uh, but it used to be uh, uh, brother Frank uh, uh, they said telegram uh, telephone uh, and then tell a woman uh, uh, but brother uh, uh, that's changed uh, uh, you don't very seldom ever see uh, a telegraph uh, uh, the telephone uh, uh, my friend are made miniature computers uh, and you tell it and it tells the world uh, and why that a Christian uh, or a professing Christian uh, uh, would put on there uh, how he loves this woman Woman, uh, how he's uh, uh, dating this woman uh, and her married. Uh, uh, these things not not to be uh, according to the word of God. Uh, I want you to know uh, uh, that adultery uh, and fornication uh, has always been sin. Uh, it's still sin, uh, uh, my friend. Uh, these things uh, ought not to be. Uh, a man should be a man uh, and a woman should should be a woman. Uh, uh, my friend, God did not uh, create gays uh, or lesbians. Uh, uh, my friend, they've turned themselves over that way uh, uh, because of sin. Uh, it's not right. Uh, and we wonder why we can't get uh, uh, people saved uh, uh, when all they got to do uh, is look at some church member uh, uh, that's not living right. Uh, uh, brother, but I want you to know something. Uh, uh, that individual uh, has to face the same God. Uh, and the bad part about it is uh, they will be in hell with the sinner uh, that pointed his finger. Uh, uh, these things uh, ought not to be. Uh, and so it said without controversy, uh, uh, great 
is the mystery of godliness. I, I want you to know something uh, uh, without dispute. Uh, uh, Jesus was born uh, uh, from the Virgin Mary, uh, uh, my friend, uh, and he uh, uh, went to an old rugged cross uh, and died uh, without controversy. He did that uh, uh, with no excuse. Uh, uh, my friend, he did that. Uh, he hung on Calvary uh, to show you his mercy uh, uh, that he had. Uh, uh, two men was beside him uh, and one of them looked over and said, God, uh, uh, remember me when you come in your kingdom. Uh, and God forgave him uh, and said, This day thou shalt be uh, in paradise with me. Uh, uh, but many people take that wrong uh, and they say, oh, I'll wait till my life's uh, about over. I'll just live uh, the way I want to until right at the very end. Uh, uh, then I'll repent. Uh, these things need not to be, brother, uh, uh, because uh, God only has to give you one chance. Uh, after that, it's just His mercy, uh, uh, my friend. Uh, without controversy, without dispute, uh, uh, great is the mystery of godliness. Uh, uh, it first started out called the Andalusian world. Uh, people had a conscience. Uh, but you know what? Uh, they overrode their conscience. Uh, they lived so bad that one day God God looked down uh, and saw the wickedness of man. Uh, he repented to himself ever made him. Uh, and destroyed the world by flood. Uh, and then come along uh, what they call the grace covenant. Uh, where they would, not the grace covenant, but the uh, uh, mosaical priesthood. Uh, uh, where they would offer something that was perfect uh, as a sacrifice. Uh, you see, since God had to uh, uh, shed uh, uh, innocent blood to cover the nakedness of Adam in the garden uh, uh, my friend uh, since the blood covered sin uh, they would offer them sacrifices uh, but they got where they wasn't offering their best uh, uh, my friend and that thing needed not to be uh, it's still that way to God God still wants us to do our best uh, uh, your best may not be as, as good as someone else but if it's the best uh, uh, my friend you can do as far as God concerned uh, it's perfect Perfect. Uh, and so then uh, uh, that went on and then he gave his son, uh, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, without any controversy, without any dispute. Uh, on the third day, he got up victorious over death, hell, and the grave and said, because I live, you can live. Without controversy, great is the mystery of God as God is manifested in the flesh, justified by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was baptized, he said, This is my Son, in whom I'm well pleased, through the Lord, when the heavens opened up. Justified by the Spirit, preached unto the Gentiles. The Apostle Paul preached. I've, 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 pre I've told this story so many times, found in the book of Acts. Whenever Paul went on his missionary journey, his first one. Now Paul was a Jew, a devoted Jew. He, he brought up at the feet of Gormelia, a teacher, a very intelligent in his day, and used to have these so-called Christian or Christ-like people, uh, had them destroyed and put in jail, till God saw him on the way one day and blinded him. And uh, Paul got saved, and he began to preach. And when he made the first missionary journey, I can see it in, in, my, in my vision and a map, how he stopped off at that little island, and then he went on head up, and when he got to Antioch of Persida, he went in and he sat down, and they was up there reading about the law and the prophets, and when he got through reading, they looked back and they seen them. And they said, men and brethren, and you have anything to say? Say on. And the Apostle Paul stood up and started giving a little history about the Jews. A Jew knows their history, if anything. They may not know Christ, but they know their history. And so then, after he gave their history, he preached to them Christ and Him crucified. And there was thousands that ended up getting saved out of that. And they wasn't all Jewish. They was Gentile people. He preached to the Gentiles. And then he said, he was received up in glory. i am telling you, and he said, and if I go away... John 14, and said, You believe in God, believe also in me. 
For in my Father's house are many mansions. And where I sold, I told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'll come again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you can be also. But there's things happening today that need not to be. Did you know? I'm sure you do. You should know. People should know. In the Timothy, as I was reading you, just above that, when you get into that scripture, it starts talking about the qualifications of a preacher. And he said he must be blameless, the husband of one wife. And he says about the deacon, he should be the husband of one wife. And didn't say, couldn't ever get saved, but he says, in order to preach, you got to be that. But they're just starting churches everywhere. They don't care how many times they've been married. These things ought not to be according to the Word of God. And we wonder why unsaved don't get saved today a lot of times. Of course, they won't be able to use that for no excuse when they get to heaven if they've heard the Word of God. But it's a shame the way the world's living today. I'm glad to know that Jesus is still on the throne. I'm glad to know He still forgives. And He said, All manner of sin shall be forgiven, except for blaspheming the Holy Ghost. And you've got to once been a Christian to do that. And that's denying it after you once felt it exist in your life. And you deny that. He said, you can't be forgiven on this earth or the one to come. And so then this morning, without any controversy, Jesus loves you. Without any dispute, He died for you. And He cares for you. And He don't want sin in your life. These things ought not to be. Just prior to that, and James is talking about the tongue, how an unruly member it is, how you can tame all kinds of animals, but you can't seem to tame the tongue. And it said with the tongue, man will bless God, and then he said it'll, it'll curse men. It says that these things ought not to be. And so let's bless God, and whatever we do, don't curse men. Don't curse nothing, because we're afraid we'll not make it questions always ask if Jesus was to come today what if he'd come today (laughs) as far as I'm concerned I wish he'd come right now or at least after this service is over because this earth's not getting any better I hate to admit it when I'm starting to get a little older getting little pains and stuff I never had before and God knows all about all that but I wonder if the Lord was to come right now. I want you to know that there's still people that's living right. There's a bunch of people that's not. But there's a whole bunch. How much, preacher? John the Revelator said he saw a number that no man can number. You think about that. We've got computers today that can number up into trillions and billions. But yet John the Revelator said he saw a number that no man could number. So I'm glad today to know that Jesus is still the Lord of Lords. I wonder as we stand and they get ready to sing, just examine your heart today. Just examine your heart.